Florida is not sinking into the ocean overnight. It is sinking little by little, so slowly that many people only begin to notice once everyday life starts to change. According to coastal monitoring data, water levels in South Florida have risen by roughly eight to nine inches over more than a century, and that pace has been accelerating in recent years. The consequences are not showing up as massive storms. In Miami Beach, the number of days with high tide flooding has increased by four to five times compared with a few decades ago. Days that were once considered normal now leave water on streets, around homes, and inside low-lying neighborhoods, even when there is no heavy rain and no emergency warning. Recent footage is unsettling not because it captures a disaster, but because it reveals a quiet shift, one that is measured by official data yet already affecting daily life. What matters is not only that water is arriving, but what has been happening beneath the surface for many years. And whether the ways people once relied on to control water are still enough to prevent what may come next. One, why Miami Beach believed water was under control. For many decades, Miami Beach has been seen as a city accustomed to living with water. Built on low-lying ground, set between the Atlantic Ocean and Biscayne Bay, it has never been unfamiliar with high tides or heavy rain. For local residents, water has always been part of everyday life, but it was rarely viewed as a threat beyond human control. That familiarity gradually created a sense of stability. Tides come in, then recede. Rain falls, then passes. When storms approach, the city prepares. When rain lingers, drainage systems engage. And when there are no weather warnings, daily routines continue as usual. In the minds of many residents, water was predictable and therefore manageable. This confidence was not based on neglect or wishful thinking. It was built through years of steady investment in infrastructure and planning. Drainage systems were expanded. Flood pump stations were installed in areas once considered most vulnerable. Roads were redesigned to better adapt to coastal conditions. These changes did not happen all at once. They accumulated gradually over time, creating the impression that the city was always staying one step ahead of environmental risks. For residents who have lived here for decades, this brought genuine peace of mind. They had watched Miami Beach endure storm seasons, face heavy rainfall, recover, and continue to grow. Each time the city stood firm through those challenges, confidence in its ability to manage the environment grew stronger. Over time, that confidence became part of how people understood coastal life. This sense of stability mattered especially to older residents. For many, a home in Miami Beach is not just a place to live, but the center of their life's savings and memories. The feeling that the city remained in control gave them the reassurance needed to go on with daily life without constantly worrying about risks they could not easily see. That understanding also shaped how the community responded to water. When there were no hurricane warnings, no prolonged rainfall, and no emergency signals from local authorities, water was not seen as a cause for concern. It was placed in the category of factors already accounted for and managed in urban design. Ordinary days were assumed to be safe. This sense of control was further reinforced by the area's natural characteristics. Miami Beach sits on porous limestone, allowing water to move beneath the surface rather than collect for long periods above ground. For many years, this was considered an advantage. After rain, water drained faster. Pressure did not build up at fixed points. The city appeared to operate in balance with its surroundings. At the same time, coastal monitoring programs were maintained to track long-term changes in baseline water levels. These shifts occurred very slowly, over years and decades, and rarely affected daily routines directly. For most residents, they remained numbers contained in reports somewhere, not something demanding attention unless a clear event forced it. The combination of increasingly modern infrastructure and slow natural change created a lasting sense of balance. The city kept running, tourism continued to grow, coastal neighborhoods remained active. This model worked long enough that many believed it would continue. But over the past few years, small cracks began to appear in that certainty, not because of a single dramatic event and not due to unusually extreme weather. Instead, subtle differences began repeating themselves on days that were once considered normal. They did not disrupt life all at once, but they were enough to quietly weaken the long-held sense of stability. 2. When rising sea levels stop being invisible The changes now emerging in Miami Beach did not begin with a single event or an unusual season. They are tied to a much slower process, one that has been tracked for a long time. 
Along Florida's coastline, monitoring stations show that baseline sea levels are rising year by year. The increase is not sudden, and it does not draw attention in a single day or season, but it is continuous and cumulative. These measurements are recorded through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Fixed Tide Gauge Network, located at multiple sites across South Florida. In any individual year, the change may be small, sometimes too subtle to affect daily life in obvious ways. But when those numbers are placed side by side across decades, the trend becomes difficult to deny. What matters is that sea levels do not need to rise quickly to have an impact. A slightly higher baseline is enough for events that were once rare to begin occurring more often. In that context, high tide days that were previously considered routine can now leave water on the surface longer, not because conditions on those days are harsher, but because the starting point of the water level has shifted. This difference is difficult to notice when viewed one day at a time, but it becomes clearer as it repeats over time. Below the surface, Miami Beach's ground plays an equally important role. The city rests on porous limestone that allows water to move underground. For many years, this was seen as an advantage, helping rainwater drain quickly and reducing surface pooling. But as outside baseline water levels rise, the way this natural system functions also begins to change. According to geological and hydrological studies by the United States Geological Survey, saltwater and groundwater do not exist as completely separate layers. They interact beneath the surface, especially in low-lying coastal areas. As sea levels rise, pressure Pressure within the ground shifts, making the boundary between dry land and water less stable than before. These changes often do not show up immediately at the surface, but they directly affect how water responds to drainage and control systems. At ground level, the city still operates in familiar rhythms. There are no clear signs of an immediate crisis, but at a deeper level, baseline conditions no longer match the state for which much of the infrastructure was originally designed. Systems still function, but not with the same consistency in every situation. Because this process unfolds slowly, it does not create a single moment when the community clearly recognizes that the context has changed. Each year adds only a small piece to the overall difference. By the time impacts begin touching everyday life, they often appear as isolated inconveniences, easy to dismiss as local issues. When those inconveniences are viewed within the larger picture of steadily rising baseline water levels, they take on a different meaning. They are not signs of unusual events, but natural responses of the environment to a new condition. And as that condition continues to shift, pressure gradually moves from nature onto technical systems that were built for circumstances that no longer exist in the same way. 3. The infrastructure fixes meant to keep streets dry. As changes in baseline water levels began to show up in everyday life, the response from local authorities in Miami Beach was generally predictable. The city did not treat this as an immediate crisis, but as a technical challenge to be handled step by step, using tools that were already familiar. For many years, efforts focused mainly on keeping public spaces functioning as usual. Streets that were frequently affected by high tides were raised. Drainage systems were upgraded to move water more efficiently. New pump stations were installed in areas long identified as weak points. The goal was clear, limit visible water on roadways and protect transportation, daily routines and economic activity that depend on everyday stability. From the outside, these steps appeared reasonable. The city needed to maintain access, especially in a place where tourism and services play such an important role. Raising roads and improving drainage were seen as the fastest way to reduce the most obvious impacts of water as baseline levels changed. These projects also created a sense that city leadership was adapting proactively rather than waiting for larger disruptions. For many residents, these measures reinforced a familiar belief that the situation remained under control. When a street no longer flooded as it once had, or water receded more quickly after a high tide, it was easy to see this as proof that the system was working. In the short term, these changes genuinely improved living conditions in prioritized areas. However, the nature of these solutions was surface-focused. They were designed to address where water appeared most clearly, where it was easiest to observe, and where it most directly affected daily life. Rarely did these projects aim to alter the deeper underlying conditions, which are far more complex and difficult to intervene in. Instead, they adjusted how the city responded to water, rather than the deeper sources of change. This approach created an important distinction. When one area was elevated or better protected, water did not leave the system. It simply changed direction. In a complex urban network, this shift was not always immediately obvious, especially when it happened slowly and in scattered ways. In the early stages, the technical measures still achieved their main objectives. Streets were drier. Daily activities faced fewer interruptions. 
signs of inconvenience decreased in certain key areas. At the same time, the overall conditions these solutions were facing had already changed from those they were originally designed for. That difference did not appear as an obvious technical failure. Systems continued operating as designed, pumps kept running, drains continued carrying water away. The issue was that the environment around them had changed, and those changes were happening at multiple levels at once, from baseline water levels to ground structure. As solutions increasingly focused on protecting specific areas, the situation grew more complicated. The short-term benefits were real, but they also raised questions about how the entire system was responding. In a limited space like Miami Beach, any adjustment in one place could create effects elsewhere, even if those effects were not immediately visible. And from these necessary measures, unintended consequences began to take shape quietly, without formal announcements, gradually entering daily life along paths very different from their original intent. 4. How water quietly shifted to other neighborhoods. When technical measures were implemented in Miami Beach, the initial impact was fairly clear. Certain streets stayed drier on high tide days, traffic was less disrupted, daily life in prioritized areas seemed more stable than before. From a short-term perspective, these outcomes match the city's goals. But water does not leave an urban system simply because one area is better protected. In a low-lying and enclosed coastal space, water only changes how it moves. When surfaces in one location are raised or drained more quickly, natural pressure pushes water toward other areas with lower elevation or weaker drainage. This shift does not happen all at once. It spreads over time and across space. The first effects usually appear in places that receive less attention. Yards hold water longer after high tides. Areas around building foundations stay damp for extended periods. These changes are not large enough to be seen as incidents, but they are persistent enough to create repeated inconvenience. For many people, they feel like minor nuisances that are hard to trace to a specific cause. Over time, as these inconveniences become less rare, they begin to build into daily pressure. Home maintenance costs rise, small repairs become more frequent, certain areas rarely mentioned in flood protection plans start to experience clearer impacts, even though they were never among the original priorities. Alongside surface changes, underground conditions respond in their own way. The porous limestone that once allowed water to move easily begins reacting to new pressures. As water appears more often in locations not designed to handle it, ground stability becomes less predictable. These changes happen slowly, but they are enough to increase long-term uncertainty. What stands out is that these effects do not appear as a clear sequence of events. There is no single moment when everyone realizes something has gone beyond expectations. Instead, they enter daily life quietly, through small scattered changes that are difficult to link to any single decision. As a result, even while technical measures continue to be seen as effective, the overall picture grows more complex. Short-term benefits in some areas come with long-term pressures in others, not because of an obvious mistake, but because of how the entire system responds once baseline conditions are no longer the same. And as these effects continue to accumulate, their impact moves beyond infrastructure and engineering, reaching directly into the everyday lives of communities with the least ability to adjust on their own. 5. The hidden costs residents began paying instead. The consequences created by technical infrastructure measures do not stop at blueprints or engineering plans. Over time, they begin to show up in the lives of specific groups of residents in very real and unavoidable ways. Not everyone living in Miami Beach or nearby areas is affected in the same manner, and those differences have become more noticeable with time. For many older homeowners, especially those who have lived for decades in low-lying neighborhoods, the impact most often comes in the form of cost. Water appearing more frequently around the home means maintenance happens more often. Small issues with foundations, yards, or private drainage systems become routine. Each repair may seem manageable on its own, but repeated over years, they turn into an unpredictable financial burden, especially for people living on fixed retirement incomes. Alongside this is the issue of insurance. As flood risk assessments are updated, home insurance costs tend to rise, or coverage conditions become stricter. For some households, this is not just a financial concern, but a deeper sense of uncertainty about the future of a property they spent a lifetime building. A home that once represented security in later years now carries more questions than it did before. These effects also extend to working residents and service workers. When water appears in areas that are not prioritized for protection, daily travel becomes less reliable. Small disruptions in routine, such as difficulty accessing parking or having to avoid low-lying streets, accumulate into long-term pressure. They are not dramatic enough to be called a crisis, but they are persistent enough to affect everyday life. 
Beyond housing and transportation, household water supplies also become a quiet concern. As underlying conditions shift and saltwater moves farther into coastal groundwater systems, the cost of treating and managing drinking water tends to increase. These costs are rarely visible on their own, but they eventually show up in utility bills paid by residents. What all of these impacts share is that they do not arrive at the same time, and they do not fall on a single group alone. They are scattered, overlapping, and cumulative. For many people, it is difficult to point to one decision or one project as the direct cause. But the feeling that everyday life is becoming less stable grows clearer with time. In this context, water is no longer just a technical issue. It becomes a question of how different communities can adapt and of who has enough resources to adjust as the surrounding environment changes slowly but continuously. 6. A city adapting without knowing. The end point. What is happening in Miami Beach does not fit neatly into familiar categories. This is not a disaster unfolding over a few days, nor a clear failure of infrastructure or policy. The city continues to function. Measures are still being implemented. Efforts to adapt continue to expand and adjust over time. But when the full picture is considered, a deeper reality comes into focus. The solutions built to manage water are not operating in a stable environment. They are working within conditions that are slowly but steadily shifting, where ground, water, and climate are no longer the same as when many systems were designed. In that setting, adaptation is no longer something that is achieved and maintained. It becomes an ongoing process without a clear finish line. This creates a challenge not only of engineering, but of choice. Each new infrastructure project requires deciding which areas are protected first. Each upgrade means other areas must accept higher levels of risk, either in the short term or over the long term. These trade-offs are rarely stated directly, but they exist in how resources are allocated. For many residents, especially those with long ties to the area, the deepest uncertainty is not about whether water will continue to appear. It is about how long this process will last and whether today's adjustments will be enough to keep life stable in the years ahead. When change unfolds slowly, the line between adapting and simply enduring becomes harder to see. Miami Beach is not alone. What is happening here reflects questions that many other coastal communities will soon face. How a city chooses to respond to environmental shifts today will shape the daily lives of residents for decades to come. And as solutions continue to be tested and adjusted, what remains unclear is whether people are buying time or entering a period where living with water will require deeper changes in how coastal places like Miami Beach are built, inhabited, and sustained. Thanks a lot for sticking with us till the very end. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of our daily uploads. And now, go ahead and explore some of our top recommended videos popping up on your screen. Goodbye, and see you in the next one.